Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to sit down today and talk to you about more eyeshadow palettes that I have had my eye on. I did a whole video like this last year and I'm starting to find that by the time I get to the tail end of summer, I start to feel an itch or I start to like become very obsessed with eyeshadow palettes. It's a facet of makeup that I really love and I am really stringent on myself with because you just can't own 100 palettes. I mean, you can, but realistically for how I like to use makeup, I will not own 100 palettes because I actually wanna have a chance at using them up. But there are four more palettes I wanna to talk to you about today and like a fifth bonus that I keep coming back to. One of them is really new, so I can't say I keep coming back to it, but the other ones, Oh, I keep coming back to them and I would just appreciate feedback from you guys on if you've used any of these and they are dynamite and I should keep yearning for them or if they're just so-so and I should stop obsessing and find new eyeshadow palettes to obsess over. Let's go ahead and jump in. The first palette is hot off the presses and I have just been drooling over it. It is, it's like unhealthy. I can't wait to see reviews on it because I'm kind of hoping that the reviews make me not want to get it, but it is yet another Natasha Denona palette. This palette is the Glam Eyeshadow Palette. It is stunning. I gotta tell you guys, I feel like if I were to describe myself in eyeshadow, I would say I'm probably more of a cool toned eyeshadow person. I really love cool tones. And I feel like that maybe is not indicative of the collection that I own because I think the makeup world has beaten me down enough with the warm toned trends. Like I feel like we're on year five of warm tones and I just deep down always get suckered in when I see a cool toned palette. And this Natasha Denona palette is pure ice. Like I chills, chills run down my body when I look at this palette. I have it on my phone here. like. It's to the point where they're almost icy silvery and I love it. I love all the like the shimmers. I love the like leaning grayness of the palette. I like that it has some taupes in there. It has some dark colors. I mean, this is just a work of art. This like the promos that are on the Sephora site right now. Oh, look at her. She is like the taupe dream goddess I want to be. I just think they are so pretty. I'm really not like a smoky eyed person. I always look like I got punched in the face. I've never mastered that. Also like a winged liner. I just kind of accepted the fact that I'm not gonna be a smoky eyed girl or a winged liner girl. But the two reasons I take pause for this is it's $65 and that is hefty. Like that's a really hefty price tag. So I have to really think about it. And two, I over the course of this summer have acquired two palettes. I acquired a Sydney Grace palette which I very much purchased on a whim and maybe if I had calmed myself down, I wouldn't have gotten in the end, but I have it. And I purchased from Alter Ego the Goddess palette, which is a Natasha Denona dupe, but like, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, if Alter Ego dupes this palette, your girl probably gonna buy it. Like, there probably won't be much of a question. I'm only really questioning it right now just because I'm trying to be a wise soul and it's $65 and you know, teaching's not where the money is. So I just, oh, I've got to know, are you into this? Do you like this palette? It's so pretty, it's so, so pretty. I need to move on or I'll keep obsessing. Like I said, can't wait to see reviews because I got to know if it's even worth it. The next palette, also a Sephora palette, is from Huda Beauty. Small sidebar here, I really am into the idea of Huda Beauty but I, prior to this palette, hadn't seen something that I felt like really compelled me. And I don't exactly know why this palette compels me, but it does. And I have continued to come back to it. It is the Mercury Retrograde Eyeshadow Palette. Oh, I, I could care less about the Mercury Retrograde business. I don't buy into that. If you do, you do you. I'm gonna do me. But the colors of this palette, I just, I think they're really pretty. And it's so bizarre to me because I've had teals like this. There's like a matte teal and then there is a deeper metallic teal in here. And I've had like the Utopia color is like a salmon-y color and I've had those before. And I don't really use them, but I'm still real into this palette. And the reason I haven't purchased it is because when I cover, which is a trick that I do sometimes to get myself to not get sucked into a palette, 
I'll cover certain colors in the palette. And then when I do that and see what's remaining, I'm kind of like, do you need this palette? The answer is no. But unfortunately, that trick doesn't work with this palette because I like the textures in here. There are some what look like almost like a pressed glitter, which I think is stunning. I think the matte colors are really pretty and then there are other metallics. Like I'm still really into this palette, but it's again, $67. And I'm just like, ooh, that seems like a steep price tag. Do you wanna pay that? And this is where the bonus palette comes in. I don't know if you guys noticed, but Wet n Wild recently came out with like a bizarrely named collection. I don't know what the collection is named, but the palette that I'm eyeing is the Ice Cream Bee palette. I like don't, what is that as a name? I'm not sure, but it is a dupe for this palette. There are so many similar shades. I don't think it's like a exact shade for shade dupe, but I look at it and that immediately I was like, Mercury Retrograde, hello Wet n Wild, I see you. And I am tempted by that palette. I am looking for some reviews on it to see if it is decent quality because if it is, you guys know Cheapy Me is probably gonna go for the cheaper version. I'm still trying not to buy it as I am with all eyeshadow palettes because do I really need it? No, I need that like I need holes in my head, but it, I just literally come back to this and the review that Emily Noel did, did not help me. Like she made it seem like a very user-friendly palette and I was like, girl, you did me wrong. I wanted you to tell me this palette was unnecessary, but she did like stunning looks with it and it just further fueled my fire. So that is also on my list. Number three that we're talking about is from ColourPop. Dang it, I'm always looking at ColourPop palettes. I think the one saving grace for me with ColourPop is that I get very overwhelmed by the number of collections that they release, and that sometimes deters me from paying that close attention to the palettes that they come out with because it's just like, blink and you miss it. Like there'll be another collection next week, see you then. Like I don't need to get too invested in whatever one you're dishing to me. And I feel like people complain a lot about them not restocking stuff. So I sort of write them off. So for something to catch my eye, it's gotta like really be a standout for me. And for me, that standout is making mobs. I'm just the cool tones. The cool tones, it is just so good. They're like these muted pinky, purple, taupe colors. I I love taupe, I really do. I love it as an eyeshadow color. I think it is stunning. Like give me a metallic taupe, I die. And again, I don't think you look at my collection and dub me as somebody who loves that. And I'm telling you, I think it's just because the makeup world has beaten me down with not cool tone taupey palettes and it pains me, it pains me. But this palette, oh man. And I'm not gonna lie, I feel like ColourPop has made a few variations of this palette this year. Like I feel like during quarantine, there was uh, a Celestial palette that was an Ulta exclusive. And I kept being like, making mobs, is that you? Like, are you not making mobs? And I like literally pinged back and forth between the two palettes. And I was like, I'm pretty sure you guys are very, very close. Like you're probably sisters, if not identical twins. But I just, I think this is really pretty. It's a super basic palette. And I'm sure I have a handful of these shades. Like, I don't think I need this whole palette to get these vibes, but it just, I, I cannot. I cannot with this palette. It just, it pulls me in. And I think it's really, really pretty. And as someone who bought the Fame palette last year, sh shortly after I filmed my eyeshadow palettes that I want video, so we'll see what happens this time. But as someone who bought the Fame palette and I really got to know the ColourPop formula, it's a really good formula. Typically when I go to like just play with my eyeshadow palettes or I need a look for like a special occasion or I just wanna make sure my makeup looks bomb, I pull that palette out and I love it. I think it's a beautiful palette. I'm shook that they got rid of it. That's what prompted me to buy it when they were discontinuing it. And I was like, no, 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 now's the time. And I don't regret buying that at all. There are other palettes I've mentioned before that I regret buying, but not that one. That one is stunning. So it does make me want to explore ColourPop more, but I just haven't. If I'm being honest, if I'm torn between like the cool tone palettes, I'm still going with the Tasha Denona, but this is this is competing and it's also a fraction of the price. It's a totally different vibe, but it's it's still like hanging out in the cool kids club and I'm here for it. Final palette I wanna to talk to you about is an old palette and I am not 100% confident this is still widely available, which sort of makes me wanna buy it, but 
also does make me want to buy it. I'm trying to not just buy things because they're limited release or they're leaving soon. Like it worked out with the Fame palette, but it's not like an MO I want to adopt. But this palette is from The Rock. I think we all know by now I'm a huge The Rock eyeshadow fan. It's mostly what my eyeshadow collection is. And I'm a little bit sad that I feel like they have fallen off the like radar of a lot of people, myself included. Like their Zoe uh, collaboration, I forget Zoe who it was, but I was just like, womp, womp, like this does not excite me. A lot of their releases, I like I keep up to date with their page and I keep being like, nah, like this doesn't pull me in. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening, but I feel like ever since they finished their series of their mega palettes, they just sort of nosedive. And it hate like I hate that because I think they're a really great quality eyeshadow. I just I haven't been pulled in. If you feel differently, let me know. But the palette that I want to talk to you guys about is the Lorac on Zip palette. Oh, this palette. This palette has a lot of things we've already talked about. It has like nice pinky lid colors, different variations of that. It also has some like warmer esque leaning rose gold esque leaning brown matte colors, but they just look so buttery and so smooth. I just, oh. It's a really pretty layout of colors. And I feel like I, have liked this palette for a long time. And I think it was sort of a front runner in this genre of palette, like this genre of color story. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like this, this palette was the first time I had seen a color story like this. And I just, I love it. I love that it is majority shimmery, like metallic colors. That's right up my alley. I will always want in a palette more metallics than mattes because really I never put a matte on my lid. It's just not my jam. I love a sparkle. A girl's gotta shine, a girl's gotta glow. Like I need that. And I really, I would say only in the last couple of years have I turned to mattes more steadily in my crease. I used to be like top to bottom shimmer and now I'm really doing shimmer mostly on just my lid. I do break from that occasionally, but I would say like I still would prefer more more of those shimmers than mattes in a palette because I will always get more use out of the shimmers than I will the mattes. I mean, really for me, panning a matte color is kind of a bonus. Panning a metallic or shimmer shade is just sort of an expectation. So it's not much of a benchmark for me, but this palette, I just think it's, I think it's so pretty. It's not too pricey. It's $35. Um, it's out of stock on the rocks website, both iterations of this. They have the unzipped and the unzipped gold. I used to, if we had filmed this video like four years ago, I would have said I wanted both, but I just, I, I I've sort of strayed a little bit from my pure rose gold gold infatuation. I used to be really hard on the rose gold jewelry and I thought it was really nice in my complexion and I still think it is, but I just have broadened my eyeshadow horizons and I'm less like suckered into gold the way I used to be. But this palette, nah girl, she's been hanging around. And again, it's $35, but it's out of stock on the Rocks website. It's in stock at Ulta, but it's an online only. And I had only learned about this palette when I walked around an Ulta one time and saw it and it just like, pulled me like from across the aisle it pulled me in so I don't know where it's going I hope it's not going anywhere but it seems like it might be on the way out which sort of makes me sad but again I don't want to buy a palette simply for that reason I've liked this palette for gosh five six years and I still haven't pulled the trigger so perhaps that's a sign I really should never buy the palette but whenever I like randomly look at eyeshadow palettes online I tend to find myself always going back to that one all right guys, those are the four palettes that I have recently been like scoping out and drooling over all over social media and websites and had to share my feelings about them with you. I would love to know if you've used any of these palettes or if there are any other palettes that you've been drooling over because I'm super curious. The eyeshadow game is strong and there are so many palettes out there in the world that I'd love to know if there are any that I didn't talk about that you're really, really into the idea of. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and I appreciate you spending some of your day with me. And as always, I'll talk to you in my next video real soon. Bye.